Hello everyone and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial and this one's going to be interesting. Uh, we're going to be talking about navigation meshes, nav meshes. Now if you don't know what they are, um, you, know, you may not even be using them in your project, there are other options available to not have to use nav meshes for, for certain things, but the most common usage is for pathing for AI. So if you're using AI or using computer controlled uh, characters, those characters will use the navigation mesh and not necessarily your actual level geometry when it comes to sorting out where it is that they're going and what it is that they're, that they're doing. So the way that we generate a navigation mesh, because there isn't one uh, by default, is to jump up here to place actors and we need to find, oh, excuse me, a nav mesh bounds volume. So we'll drag that into the scene center it at zero and then we will size it up so we'll make it a bit taller it's a bit too tall a little shorter there we go now the only important thing the only thing to note about your nav mesh is that you have to have it cover all of the walking space in your level and ideally you only want one um, nav mesh bounds volume but you may you may use multiple, um, but for each one that you use, we'll have a different agent, but I'll cover that in a minute. So you have the bounds volume hanging out there. Uh, well, while we're, while we're talking about it, there's also nav modifier volumes. So um, these can be for like blocking off certain areas from being navigatable, which can be useful. Uh, or some other, some other slide options. It's just another volume basically that affects navigation, but everything inside this nav mesh bounds volume is going to have the nav mesh constructed. And we can actually see the nav mesh too, or we can preview it. If just here in the viewport with focus, we hit P, the P key, we can see our nav mesh visualized. And as you can see by default, it's garbage, basically. <laughs> it's it's not good. We have all this all these dodgy shapes up here. They're not aligning with the floor. Things are on strange angles, not flattening out properly and plus we have all this space all around here which we may not even use like nothing straight nothing lines up but it is lightweight and efficient it's generated very quickly so you know if i don't know if, if this is what you need then you know then go for it that's totally fine but what we're going to do today is have a look at improving the nav mesh improving our nav mesh settings and making a like really high de highly detailed um really, really flexible uh, nav mesh. So let's jump into the settings and have a look and see uh, see some ways that we can improve this. So we go edit, then project settings, and come down here to navigation mesh. So bit of an intimidating page. Uh, there's lots and lots of options to change, things that aren't going to make a lot of sense, that kind of thing. But I'm just gonna run through these settings and um, yeah, sort of explain things as I go. Do a few, do a few other little little bits of tweaking. We don't have to worry about this uh, this top chunk at all. Um, this is just for displaying it on um, on on screen in the viewport, like we just did. All we want to worry about is generation, how the nav mesh is generated. So let's uh, run down here. So we can't affect the tile pool size. That's locked. Um, oh, I mean, we can we can edit it ourselves if we want to, but we just won't have a flexible tile pool size. We'll leave these top two alone. Tile size in units. So the, the nav mesh is going to be comprised of units as dictated by an agent. We'll get to the agent in a sec. Um, a smaller tile size uh, means sort of more cells, more tiles around your level. And this can help with uh, negotiating corners and, and sort of other, other angles, that kind of thing. So we'll lower this to 544 is a good number. The cell size is currently at, uh, cell size and height is currently at 19 and 10 respectively. We make this way smaller and that'll allow us to get like into the corners and, and up against walls and that kind of thing. So we'll just set these two to one. See, it's going to rebuild navigation as, as we go and hopefully not crash. <laughs> uh, we'll let that run. Then our agent height and radius uh, will also drop down. We'll set this five and five, they're good numbers. So this is the, the radius and height of the actual agent that, that spans the level and, and tells us where to generate uh, generate nav mesh. So we keep moving down the agent max slope. Uh, so this would be the angle, um, that's the steepest angle that, that the nav mesh will be generated on. We'll just leave this at 44. It's a decent angle, sort of just one dot under uh, a perfect diagonal. Max step height, uh, similar thing. So this will dictate how high up a, uh, a nav mesh can um, 
can jump um, in, a, in a step. 35 might be a little bit high. We're going to lower this down to 10. Minimum region area, we'll leave at zero. The merge region size, now this is, we'll see in the tooltip, the size limit of regions to be merged with bigger regions. Uh, watershed partitioning only. If we look down here at region partitioning, so they're set to watershed, we'll leave them alone. We don't need to, don't need to affect anything uh, below this line, I don't think. Um, so the max step height at 10, uh, minimum region area at zero, minimum region size, or merge region size. We'll drop this down too. So it's gonna start merging regions at one quarter the size that it ordinarily would. And then our simplification errors, we'll just leave at 1.3. That's just some error control that we don't, don't have to worry about. So that's enough uh, of this page. The next thing is to go over to the one below it, navigation mesh, navigation system. So in navigation system, uh, we have even more settings that we can, we can affect. But the one that we need to care about most is down the bottom, agents. If we make an agent and hold in shift and bring down this array, we get these, uh, we get these um, these settings well, settings to play with, and it's a bit similar to uh, the, what we did before, which uh, was change the settings for the generation of the nav mesh. Here we can change the settings for the agent that dictates to where that nav mesh is generated. So uh, just like before, let's just run down the list. Uh, query extent uh, we don't change. The nav data class is our recast nav mesh. If we go back over to our world and then to the world outliner, see we have a recast nav mesh here. Now this is the actual nav mesh in our level. Like if we delete this, then our nav mesh bounds volume just generates another one. You'll have to delete this bounds volume and probably this as well in order to clear away all the nav data from your project. So um, with that set there by default. Okay, now let's set some settings. So the nav agent radius is 35. That's actually very big. We'll drop that down to just three. Uh, the nav agent height will go down to four. The step height at four. Uh, nav walking search height scales are preferred, preferred nav data. The preferred nav data we want to set to the recast nav mesh. And the only other thing, oh yeah, so our agent here, he's like a little goblin that lives in the engine and he's gonna walk around your level and he's gonna be taking notes the entire time and then sending those notes to the nav mesh for how to treat navigation using that mesh. So our little agent can do everything that a player pawn can do, fly, swim, walk, jump, and crouch. In this case, we want him to be able to just walk around the level. So we'll tick can walk and that's really all that we have to do. So we can close our project settings and look back at our at our nav mesh. And now we can see, so it's still not perfect. There may still need to be some um, changes to be made, uh, but you can force you can force a regeneration of your nav mesh just by moving uh, moving your bounds volume. And see these red shapes here are going to regenerate everything. It'll probably produce the same same result. Yeah. So okay, there is still an error with the nav mesh here in this, uh, this slope here. But we can have a better look here. See now it's hugging these corners much more neatly. Uh, we're doing much better, much better around here. These kind of shallow angles are always going to be a bit, uh, a, a bit iffy. But um, yes. Uh, one other thing that I'll bring out that you might want to experiment with. If we go back to our project settings and back to navigation mesh, scroll down. Uh, I mentioned the watershed uh, partitioning earlier. So one of these, can't remember which one it was. Uh, oh, it, it mentioned it mentioned the watershed. The watershed partitioning was the region um, merging regions, wasn't it? Doesn't matter. Anyway, if we change uh, this region partitioning to say chunky monotone, uh, it's it's going to rebuild our navigation. And after a second, we'll go back and have a look. So it's basically the same, but yeah, as you can see here, it has produced a different result that's a little it's a little smoother I think maybe a little um little little better so yeah that's uh pretty much well pretty much it uh, I hope this has offered a, a fairly good sort of intro to uh, nav meshes and how navigation meshes work uh, you'll notice that with the default third person character he, he doesn't use nav meshes at all he just um, uses the, the player movement or character movement component and just runs around on top of any surface with collision. So it's really only used for um, for AI. And even then, you could probably code your AI in such a way that it wouldn't use nav meshes. I know that some games use nav meshes for uh, VR, for teleporting. 
and for like scooting around on the ground with the joystick movement. But it's really, it's really all up to you. Like whether you use nav meshes or not, um, they're there, they're in the engine, they do serve a use. I wouldn't be surprised if they'd be uh, probably not removed from the engine, but um, redeveloped in some way, sort of re-optimized somehow. Uh, because, yeah, they're, they're sort of clunky and fiddly and, and a bit strange to work with. But hopefully this has provided you with a decent um, decent groundwork of how to set them up. Plenty of settings to tweak and play with. And um, you can probably improve on improve on even these settings. Like go out right to the edge, get one for every step, maybe, of these stairs. You know, um, yeah, I hope this puts you on the right track, guys. So thank you for watching. As always, the easiest and best way to get in contact with me is on Discord. I'll leave a link down below. And uh, there will also be a link to my Gumroad store and a PayPal link in case you want to make an independent financial donation. Obviously, non-compulsory as always. Just a nice way to, uh, to show that you enjoy my work and that you enjoy the channel. So thanks again, guys, and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.